so let's go ahead and move on then. All right, so let's go back to this example, and I know we kind of rushed at the end um, to try to get through at least the horizontal asymptote piece of this. Um, so that's why I want to go back and look. So can somebody remind me, how did we find the horizontal asymptote for this function? Good, right? And so specifically, we're going to divide the leading coefficients, or in this case, the 3 and the 2, and so that's how we got y equals 3 halves. So remember, the rule is if our exponents on top and bottom, if those degrees are the same, then we can just look at the numbers out front here and divide them, and that will give us the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's one of the three cases we could see. We're going to look at the other two cases today also. Okay, but that's the rule for this one. If the exponents are the same on top and bottom, just divide those numbers there. That's how we get that. Okay, now what if we want to find vertical asymptotes for this one? What are we going to have to do? Good. So we want to set our denominator equal to zero. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you that I want to caution you about, and we'll see this as we go through the rest of this section, let's factor everything first, because if we have any factors that cancel, then we don't have to worry about those in terms of our vertical asymptotes. Okay, so I'm going to factor the numerator if possible. I'm going to factor the denominator if possible, and then we'll look and see what we've got left, and then we'll set our denominator equal to zero. So, can we factor the numerator? Let's start there. And if you think you've got factors that work, just type it in the chat, or you can open up your microphone and tell me what you think it is. All right, so we've got, so 3x plus 1 and x minus 1. So let's check that. So 3x plus 1 and then x minus 1. Good. All right, so now if we multiply that out, let's just make sure it gives us what we started with. So 3x times x is the 3x squared. Our outer terms are going to be negative 3x, inner terms positive 1x. So a negative 3x and a positive 1x will give us negative 2x, and that 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Okay, so that is correct. Now let's look at the denominator. All right, so we want to do the same thing, see if we can factor the denominator. Let's see what you get for that. All right, so 2x minus 1 and x plus 2. Right, so again, let's just double check, make sure that makes sense. So we have 2x times x is 2x squared. Outer terms give us a positive 4x. Inner terms a negative 1x. So 4x minus 1x is 3x. And then negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Okay, so that is the correct factored form now. Now what we want to look for is to see, do we have any common factors in the numerator and denominator that will cancel? So if we look at this one, do we have any common factors this time? No, right? So nothing's going to cancel. So at that point, now I'm going to take my denominator and I'm going to set it equal to zero to help us find those vertical asymptotes. So we've got 2x minus 1 equals zero and x plus 2 equals zero. So we're just going to take each factor from the denominator, set it equal to zero. So what should we get from this first factor once we solve that equation? One half. Good. So we move the one over, that becomes a positive one. We divide it by two, so x equals one half. And then the other factor is going to give us what? Negative two. Good. So x equals negative two. 
Now, when we actually write these out in terms of our vertical asymptotes, make sure that we are keeping the entire equation here, right? So this right here, x equals one half, that is one of our vertical asymptotes. And then our other vertical asymptote is gonna be x equals negative two. And I say that because in WebAssign, you have to make sure that you're putting the entire equation there, not just the numerical value. Okay, so the equation is x equals one half and x equals negative two. Any questions on that one? Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this in Desmos, and I'll share that screen with you so we can look at the graph together just to make sure that our asymptotes make sense here. It's always a good idea just to go ahead and graph it. And if you have a graphing calculator, feel free to go ahead and Type this function in there also. All right, so there's our graph. <clears throat> All right, and so if you remember, we said we should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals three halves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and graph that equation y equals three halves. If you see that blue line now, as we go towards negative infinity and as we go towards positive infinity, our curve is going to approach that blue line, but it's never going to touch it, right? So that's why we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals three halves. Now the vertical asymptotes, we said those should be x equals one half and x equals negative two. And so now we can see we have the green line and the purple line there. Um, on one side, on the left-hand side, at x equals negative 2. The graph is approaching that vertical line at negative 2, but it's never going to quite get there. Same thing with that green line at x equals 1 half. The curves, both top and bottom there, are approaching that line at x equals 1 half, but they're never going to get there. So that's one way we can actually check and make sure that our asymptotes are correct, is just to look at the graph and make sure that it's actually approaching those values that we got. Any questions on that now? Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the next example. So it says we want to graph the function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and we're going to find all the important information here and then we'll look at the graph and we'll see if the graph actually matches the information that we got. All right, so let's start with horizontal asymptotes. So if I look at this function here and I want to find the horizontal asymptotes, what would I have to do? Okay, so Kenneth says it's two, right? And how did you get two, Kenneth? Two divided by one, right? So we notice again, we have x squared in the numerator, we have x squared in the denominator, since those are the same degree, we can look at the numbers out front here and we can divide them. Remember, there's an understood one in front of that x squared. So we're going to do two divided by one, and that's going to give us two. Now, remember, the entire equation here is actually going to be y equals two. So again, when you're putting those in web sign, just make sure you've got the entire equation for that horizontal line. So y equals two. Any questions on that? Let's look for vertical. So if I want to find my vertical asymptotes, what are we going to have to do first? Good. 
We want to factor first, see if we have any common factors to cancel out, and then we'll set our denominator equal to zero. So if we look at the numerator here, can we factor that? Anybody got those factors yet? Okay. So, Emily, I think you're looking at the denominator, right? Because that's how we would get the X minus one and the x plus two um, so i agree with the denominator that's what that factor is going to be right so x minus one x plus two down here and then kenneth says the numerator that looks good 2x minus one and x plus four okay because now if we just double check right 2x times x is 2x squared we'll have a positive 8x and a minus 1x that's our 7x and then negative one times four is negative four and then down in the denominator, um, x times x is x squared. We'll have a positive 2x, a negative 1x. That gives us our x here. And then negative 1 times 2 is going give to give us a negative 2. Right, so that is the correct factored form. Now, do we have any common factors that are going to cancel out? No, right? So, and at that point, if I want to find my vertical asymptotes, what are we going to do? Good. So it is going to be positive 1 and negative 2 because we're going to set x minus 1 equal to 0, we're going to set x plus 2 equal to 0, and we're going to solve. So when we do that, we get x equals 1, and we get x equals negative 2. And again, we want to keep that entire equation. So we have x equals 1, x equals negative 2. Any questions on finding those vertical asymptotes now? All right, now let's think about our domain. So remember, domain means we're looking for all the possible x values for this graph. So if I want to list the domain, Any ideas on what that would look like here? So, if we have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1, that means that our graph is never going to go through this value and it's never going to go through that value, right? So, Naomi's, Naomi's got it here, right? So, we've got negative infinity 
to negative two, not including the negative two, so we want parentheses there. Then we're gonna do a union. Again, we're gonna pick up with negative two to one. Again, not including either one of those values. And then a union, and then one to infinity. Because in this case, since we have vertical asymptotes at those two values, we wanna make sure we're not including those in our domain. Because remember, our graph is gonna approach those values, but it's never actually gonna to get to those values. So this right here would be the domain for that function. Now, range I'm never gonna ask for, right, for a test or anything like that. Um, so you can look at your graph and we'll do that together just to kind of get an idea of what the range is. But as long as you can kind of find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, find your domain this way by just looking at those asymptotes. Um, those are the main things I'm going to ask for. So any questions on that? I'll go ahead and graph this so we can double check. If you want to do that with me, that's fine. Share this. All right, so there's our graph. And so remember we said we should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. So I'm just going to graph y equals 2 so we can see that. There, that black line you can see on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, our graph is getting close to that line at y equals 2, but it's never going to actually get there. So that's why we have a horizontal asymptote there. And again, don't worry about the fact that the middle of the graph goes through that point. Okay, it's all about what's it doing on the right as we go towards infinity and on the left as we go towards negative infinity. That's what's giving us that horizontal asymptote. And then our vertical asymptotes, so we should have one at x equals negative 2 and the other one at x equals 1. And so if we look there, we can see the negative 2 on the left-hand side of our graph. Right, It's going up from the right-hand side and it's going down from the left-hand side, approaching the value of negative 2. And then on the one, right, same thing, it's going down from the left and it's going up from the right. We're never going to get to that value of positive one either. So use that graph to your advantage to kind of double check your answers. Okay, but again, we don't want to see the work for how we actually get those values, um, but you can always double check with the graph. Any questions there? Look at this one. All right, so I want to do the same thing on this one that we did on the last one. So I want to find horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, and then we'll look at domain, and then we'll sketch the graph to make sure everything matches. So first off, let's start with horizontal asymptotes. All right, so horizontal asymptote, one half, good. And again, this is one of those cases where we have an x squared in the numerator, x squared in the denominator. Those degrees are the same. So now we can just divide the coefficients. We have an understood one in front of this. We have a 2 down here, 1 divided by 2 is going to give us y equals 1 half. And again, don't forget the y equals part, right? So it is going to be y equals 1 half for the horizontal asymptote. Any questions about that part? All right. Now, what about vertical? What do we need to do first? Good. So this time we're going to factor, right? And so if we factor the numerator this time, 
Good. So it is a difference of squares. So we're going to get x plus 2 and x minus 2 as our factors. What about the denominator? Good. So we have a common factor here of what? 2x, right? So I'm going to factor out the 2x, and that would leave us with what? Okay, good. So it's just x plus 1, right? Because if I put an x here, 2x times x is 2x squared, and then a plus 1, 2x times 1 would be Now, once we've done that, again, we ask ourselves, do we have any common factors? It's grainy. So no, good, right? So again, we don't have any common factors this time. Nothing's going to cancel out. So now we have to say, well, how are we going to find the vertical asymptotes? Or what are those vertical asymptotes going to be? Okay, good. So we're going to set 2x equal to 0, and when we divide by 2, that gives us x equals 0, and then we do the same thing with the x plus 1, and when we solve for x, that should give us x equals negative 1. So that means our vertical asymptotes over here now, we're going to have one at x equals 0, we have one at x equals negative 1, and then the last piece we want to find is the domain here. So what would our domain look like for this one? Okay. So almost German. So be careful here, right? This was a negative one. And since negative one is less than zero, we want to make sure we do the negative one first, right? Um, so good. So we're from negative infinity to negative one, union, negative one to zero, union, zero to infinity. Okay. Any questions there now? And again, you can graph this just to double check, right? And so in this case, we should have a vertical asymptote at zero, a vertical asymptote at negative one, and then that horizontal asymptote should be at y equals one half. share this graph. So this one's a little different. Okay, if you've graphed it, you might have noticed that. So this is what our graph looks like this time. And we said we should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals one half, which just means to the left and to the right, we should be approaching a horizontal line one half. So there you go, that green line to the left and to the right, we're approaching that line. And you might see Right on the left hand side, it's actually going through that line. And what happens is it comes back down. So it's actually approaching that line from above this time, okay, which is a little bit different from anything we've seen before. So it goes through the line and then it starts to curve back down towards that line. Whereas on the right hand side, it's just approaching from the bottom. Right, and then our vertical asymptotes, 
should be at x equals 0 and x equals negative 1. And so there you go. All right, so we have the one at negative 1. We have the one at 0. And this time, um, it doesn't look like there's anything in between those values. Um, but we said our domain should have values between negative 1 and 0, right? So I'm going to actually change my scale here and see if we can find those values. I'm going to bump up the y max value here to something like that. So now we can actually see there is part of our curve up a little bit higher. We just couldn't see it before. Okay, and so we do have that U-shaped piece in between the negative 1 and 0 this time. Any questions on that one now? Take a look at this one. Okay, so again, same thing. I want to find horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, and domain, and then we'll take a look at the graph. So if I'm looking for horizontal this time, what's our horizontal asymptote going to be? Okay, all right, good, Kenneth, right? So it's either there isn't one or it would just be y equals zero. And so we have to go back and think about those rules that we had. Let's see if I can find that slide real quick. I'll pop it up there so we can look at it together. And so we had those three rules for finding horizontal asymptotes. Here it is. And so we look at our three cases here, right? And the ones we've done so far have been where the Degree in the numerator is the same as the degree in the denominator. When they're equal to each other, we just divide. In this case, do we have the A case or the C case? It's A, right? Because in this one, our N value is actually less than our M value. Because looking at this now, we have an exponent of 1 in the numerator. We have an exponent of 2 in the denominator. Since 1 is less than 2, this is the one we're looking at, which means we're going to have horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 instead. Okay? So no work to be done, just y equals 0. And again, that's because this exponent is smaller than that exponent, and that's what it will always be if that's the case. Any questions on that part? All right, now, vertical asymptotes. So what do we need to do? Good. So if we look at the numerator, can we factor the numerator? Good, we can, right? So 5x plus 21, nothing we can do to factor that. So now we want to go to the denominator, see if we can find factors of that trinomial. Good. So it is going to be x plus 5 squared, right? So it's going to be x plus 5 and x plus 5. Or if you want to write x plus 5 squared, that's the same thing, right? Do we have any common factors? No cancels out right so at that point we can just take our denominator we can set it equal to zero and since it's going to be the same i don't need to do that work twice right i can just do x plus five equals zero and so we're going to get x equals what 
negative 5. So we only have one vertical asymptote this time, x equals negative 5. Yes, Sarah? Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Um, can you explain why it's only one vertical asymptote since we have repeating factors? So in this case, if I were to set this one equal to zero, I'm just going to get exactly that same thing, right? And since a vertical asymptote is actually like a vertical line that you're approaching, I'm basically just saying, well, yeah, I'm still just approaching the exact same vertical line for that factor that I'm approaching for that factor. Okay. So it's really only one that's going to show up on the graph, even though it's a repeated factor. Now, I'll show you when we look at the graph why it's different because it's repeated, what happens around that value compared to some of the other ones we've already looked at. Okay? So the graph right. will look slightly different, but it's still just going to have that one vertical asymptote. Okay? Thank you. Yep. Right. If we just factor the denominator without factoring the numerator, do we still get the same answer? So, German, I think the next example that I'm going to do, um, you'll see why we have to factor both, um, because sometimes we'll have factors that cancel, and then we won't have, let's say that, you know, x plus 5 had canceled here, and this was a different factor altogether. We wouldn't actually have a vertical asymptote at that cancel factor. Okay, so that's why we need to factor both to see if anything cancels first. Any other questions up to that point? Okay. So what would our domain be for this one then? Good, right? So since we only have that one vertical asymptote, it's just negative infinity to negative 5 union negative 5 to positive infinity, right? Negative 5 is the only version this time, so that's what we would get there. Any questions on that domain? So let me graph this one. So there's our graph this time. And so we said we should have horizontal asymptote y equals 0. Right? So I graph y equals 0. That's just going to be the x-axis. Right? So you're not going to be able to see it too well, but there it is. It's in red. And notice here, on the left and the right-hand sides, right? on the left it's coming from the bottom approaching the x-axis, and on the right it's approaching from the top. Okay, we have that horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And then we said we should only have one vertical asymptote, and it should be at x equals negative 5. So there's x equals negative 5. And you'll notice in this case, on the left and the right-hand side, both sides of that are approaching in the same direction, right? So they're both going down towards negative and this time, whereas all of our other ones, one was going one way and the other side was going the other way, right? So it's because of the fact that this was an x plus 5 squared that that's the reason that we're actually going in the same direction on both sides of that asymptote. Okay, so again, that's just something, not that you're going to need to know that because you're going to have your graphing calculator, right? Okay, but just something to kind of keep in mind that whenever you have that repeated factor um, for your asymptote, it's going to actually go in the same direction on both sides when you're doing that. 
Any questions on that one now? Let's take a look at these. This is where we're going to see why it's important to factor the numerator and the denominator. So if we take a look at the s of x function, first off, what would be our horizontal asymptote for that one? Good. All right. So since we have x to the first power in the numerator, we have x squared in the denominator, one is smaller than two, so this is automatically just going to be y equals zero for the horizontal asymptote. Now, to find the vertical, remember we need to factor first, right? Can we factor the numerator? No, right? So that's just going to stay x minus three. What about the denominator? We have a common factor of x, and if we factor out the x, we're left with x minus 3. Now, do we have any common factors? Yes, right? And so in this case, because we have that x minus 3 in common, we can actually cancel out these common factors. And so what is this thing going to simplify to? one over x, right? So the x has to stay in the denominator, and then we just have a common factor, or the one is like an understood factor of one out front, so we have one over x as our simplified function this time. Okay. So now, if I'm looking for my vertical asymptotes, what are we gonna get for the vertical asymptotes? just x equals zero, right? Because once we've simplified here, we're just gonna take whatever factors left over and we're gonna set it equal to zero. And so we're just gonna get x equals zero as a vertical asymptote this time. So German, that kind of goes back to your question you were asking, well, are we gonna get the same thing if we don't factor? This is why we have to, because if we didn't factor the new, in this case, right, it was already kind of factored for us. But we have to look for those common factors because otherwise we might think there's actually a vertical asymptote at x equals three, but there's not going to be, okay? Now, this x minus three right here though is still gonna give us a restriction on our domain. So we have to be very careful. It's not gonna be a vertical asymptote, but if we set that equal to zero, it's going to give us what we call a hole, all right? So our graph, basically, it's going to look like it's just a nice smooth curve there, but there's actually going to be a hole in the graph at whatever x value we get here, okay? So what would that x value be? Three, right? So this is going to give us a hole at x equals three, and we'll look at this graph and we'll see that, right? So we should have horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. The only vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals zero, but then we should also have a hole in our graph at x equals three. So what would the domain for this function then? Okay. 
Good, right? So we still have a restriction at zero and we have a restriction at three, even though that factor canceled out. So in terms of our domain, it's going to be negative infinity to zero, union, zero to three, union, three to infinity. So just keep that in mind when you're doing domain. We have to consider vertical asymptotes, but we also have to consider any holes in the graph. And so this is going to be our domain this time. Okay, so I'm going to put that one in Desmos so we can see what it looks like. So the graph, and so we can see in this case that horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So I'll turn that one on. And again, it's kind of difficult to see, right? But it should be kind of blue purple color. Um, that's the x-axis. And so we're approaching that from the left and the right here. And then our only vertical asymptote that we should have should be at x equals zero, which is just the y-axis. And you can see that's kind of bolded in black now. Okay, so that is our vertical asymptote. Now, we also said, though, that there should be a hole in the graph at x equals 3. Now, you might be looking at that graph and going, wait a minute, I don't see any holes in my graph at all. If you actually trace along this curve and you look for a value of x equals 3, my best to get right on 3, there we go. So you can see... That theme, it says that that is undefined now, right? And so there actually is a hole in the graph at x equals 3. So if you were sketching this graph yourself, you would actually want to put a, a little open circle at that point to make sure it's clear that there is no actual defined point there. There's actually a hole in the graph, okay? But again, when you're graphing it on your calculator or you're graphing in Desmos, you're not going to actually be able to see that hole there. It's going to look it's continuous, um, but just know that it is undefined at that point, okay? Any questions on that one? All right. Let's look at the second one on this slide. It's the same thing. So I want to look for horizontal vertical asymptotes in domain. And then if we end up with any holes, we want to find those also. So what do you want to do first? Okay, so let's look for horizontal asymptotes. So what are we going to have for horizontal asymptotes this time? Okay, so Kenneth says zero, right? And I got some people saying none. So let's think about what case we have here, right? So let's look at our degrees. So in the numerator, the highest exponent is a three. In the denominator, the highest exponent is a one. So this is the case where the degree in the numerator is bigger than the degree in the denominator, right? So that's n is greater than m, good. And so remember back to that slide, we have the case where n is bigger than m. That's actually the C case down here, which tells us then that there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so since the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree in the denominator, we're not going to have a horizontal asymptote this time, and so we can just say none. Any questions on that? Now we need to find the vertical asymptote.
asymptotes and any possible holes that we might have. How are we going to do that? Good. So let's factor. So let's look at our numerator here. So what are we going to get if we factor the numerator? Okay, so we have x squared. And then that's going to leave us with x minus 2. Denominator here is just x minus 2, so nothing to factor there. But if we simplify this, what are we going to get? X squared, right? Because the x minus 2 common factor cancels out. And so we're just left with an x squared this time. Okay, so now, if we're talking about vertical asymptotes, where are we going to have a vertical asymptote? Two people saying zero. I've got somebody saying none. So remember, to find the vertical asymptote, we're taking the denominator, we're setting it equal to zero, right? Well, what's our denominator here? one right because this is x squared over one is one ever going to equal zero no right so for this one since there is no x in my denominator anymore i'm just going to have to say that there are no horizontal or sorry vertical asymptotes for this one right so there are none so if all of your denominator just cancels out like that okay, then there's not going to be any vertical asymptotes because our vertical asymptotes come from what is left over in the denominator and there's nothing left over in the denominator this time. Any questions on that? Now, will we have any holes in our graph this time? Yes, right? So now we go back before we canceled anything out. We did have this factor of x minus 2 and so we have to take that and we have to set it equal to 0 right and so that's actually going to give us x equals what positive 2 right so there actually will be a hole in our graph at x equals 2 this time all right so let me look at this graph real quick this will be the last thing we do So that's what our graph actually looks like this time, right? And if you think about it, once we simplified everything, we just got x squared. Well, x squared should look like a parabola, and that's exactly what this looks like. Now, the only difference is that, remember, we said we're not going to have any horizontal asymptotes, which we don't. We're not going to have any vertical asymptotes, which we don't. But we should have a hole in our graph at x equals 2. So again, I'm going to trace along my curve here until I find an x value of 2. And when I get there, you can see, again, it says undefined there. There actually would be an open circle on that parabola at 2 because we have an undefined point there because of that denominator. So that's the only thing you're going to have this time as a whole, but there are no horizontal or vertical asymptotes. Any questions on that one? Um, so, yeah, I actually mentioned that at the very beginning. Sorry. Um, the homework is due on April 1st, which is Wednesday by midnight. Okay. Any other questions? You are welcome. All right, if you've got any other questions or anything, feel free to hang out. I'll hang out for a few more minutes before my next class. Uh, otherwise, you guys are free to go. Thank you for coming. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good afternoon.